Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Northgard Uncharted Lands. At this point, we have gone through the first couple of turns in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the eye up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I really might make mistakes as I play through the rest of the game, and that will let me put corrections on the screen, which will make this as accurate a playthrough experience as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, we are just starting off the second round of the game, and that means the first thing that we have to do is have each player draw cards, which means we draw four cards from the top of our deck, plus one for each forge building we control. We don't have any of those, so we can draw four cards, and that is our whole deck, and then the same goes for the blue player. Now the yellow player does control a forge, which means they will draw four plus one or five cards. As you can see, they also have four cards in their deck, so they now have to reshuffle up their discard pile and then draw the top card from their new draw pile. Next up, we have to draw three new common cards. So we'll take them from the top of this deck. The first one here says Skirmishers, and it gives you a three-move card. The second one is Industrious Villagers. Now that says that you can do a build action, and it says if you are building a small building, then it can be an identical building to another one in the same territory. Remember, normally you cannot build two of the same building in a territory, but this lets you break that. The third card is going to be a special one, and it says Future Sight. Down below it says you can immediately pick one face-up card from the common deck and place it on the top of your own deck. You will not pick another card from the common deck at the end of your turn. So this effectively lets you grab a common card in the middle of a round instead of at the end of a round. Alright, it's now time for actions to be played, and the blue player does have the starting token, so that means they can take the first action of this round. Alright, it's now time for the action phase of the round, and the blue player can start this off. Now for their first action, they want to do an upgrade. This means they have to play a card from their hand into their active area, but then not use its ability, so they are not going to be exploring here. And then they can spend three of their lore tokens, which they do have, in order to take one of these two upgrade cards and add it into their hand. So they are going to choose this one, which will go right over here, and that has finished up their turn. This means yellow can go, and they want to play an explore card just like the blue player, but they are actually going to explore with it. So they'll draw the top card from the map deck, and they can add this down onto the board, and it appears it must go here or there, because this is the only open territory that the yellow player currently controls. After considering the options, they are going to place this right over there. Alright, it's time for us to go now, and these are the four cards that we have. As you can see, we do now have the special card that we start with for the Goat Clan. Both of our opponents drew this in the first round, and it looks like we are getting it in the second round. Now, this is a Lightning Bolt symbol, which means we can play this along with another card on a turn, and it has a building symbol, and down below it says the building can be identical to any other one in the same territory. So this lets us break that rule. Well, at the moment, I think let's start off with our trading post. So that lets us draw three cards and then discard one of them and then put one back on the top of our deck. So we obviously don't have any cards to draw, which means we have to shuffle up our discard pile, which has four cards in it. So we're going to see almost all of these. We can then draw these three. And let's see, we have an explore, a move, and a build. Now, I think I like the idea of exploring on this turn. Moving does seem pretty good as well, but building is not really that great for us. We already have that other build card in our hand, and we do only have one of our wood. So I think let's discard that, and then we do have to decide which of these to put into our hand. Now, we don't currently have a move uh, or an explore, but we do have a feast, which could, of course, do either one of those two options. Well, let's look out to the map, and we do currently control one open territory, and we could explore into that and potentially cap it off to get more fame at the end of the round if we still control this territory, so I think exploring might be slightly better this round. So we can add that into our hand, and then the move will go onto the top of our deck. Alright, that's finished up our turn. So blue can go next, and they are going to play a feast card, which means they can do any of the four basic actions, and they want to recruit. So they are going to bring out a new unit and they've decided to place them right over here. Moving on to the yellow player, they have decided to play a feast, and they want to explore with it. So they can draw the top tile, and this is effectively what they were looking for. They wanted to be able to close this territory in, which they can do. They were hoping that this might have a resource on it as well, but that does not look to be the case. Either way, they have now enclosed this area, so now they will get one, two, three, four, five fame. 
They can add that to their pile, and they are now done with their turn. All right, we can go, and we do have a recruit card in our hand, so I think let's play that out. This means we can recruit one unit, and I think we should place it right over here where we have a training camp. That means we will recruit another unit right over there. Now, we do have a lot of units out on the map, but as the Goat Clan, we do collect extra food every harvest, so it's easier for us to feed large armies. Well, the blue player can go, and they are going to start by playing a Lightning Bolt card. This is the level 2 Raven card they upgraded into as part of their first action. This says they can remove an enemy unit that is not a Warchief from any territory and collect one resource from that territory. Now that territory does not need to be adjacent to them, but they have decided to target this territory over here, so that means we are going to lose one unit, and then the blue player is going to take a single food. After that, they are going to play another one of these Lightning Bolt cards. This says Capture, and it says they may remove one enemy unit that's not a Warchief from a territory adjacent to theirs, and then they can add one unit that's not a Warchief to one of their territories. Well, they've decided to remove one of ours again, so it does seem like they are softening us up over here, and then they are going to add another unit into this territory. After that, they have just one card left in their hand, and they can play it because, of course, they just played the Lightning Bolt cards earlier, and this is a feast. Now, they want to use the one movement on that, and they are going to move three out of their four units from this territory into ours. Now, that is going to finish up the movement, and now we have the first real battle of the game. So, the first thing that we can do is count up our axes. We have one, unfortunately, compared to the three of our opponents, and then there are no bonuses coming in from any buildings or cards. The next thing to happen is we have to spend food, and the attacking player decides how much they want to spend. They obviously can spend up to one per unit, so they could spend three food if they want. And they have decided to do that. That means they are up to six axes total, and now we could spend up to one food with our one person right here. Now, the fact that they got up to six means it might not make sense for us to spend the food at all. If we spent it, we would go to two axes, which means we would still be four behind. And the most amount of axes we can get from a die roll is three. I think that's probably why the blue player spent three instead of two, because they wanted to effectively guarantee the win for themselves. Because of that, I think let's save our food, and we effectively know that we are going to lose. Now, each one of us can roll the combat dice. Ha! And it looks like we both got the same value. So the next thing that we do is check casualties, and it looks like we have one on each side. So we are going to lose one of our units, and so will the blue player. And at this point, we don't even need to count up axes because obviously one player has been fully removed, so the battle is over. That means the blue player, of course, does have to get rid of these three food, and they now control this territory. All right, yellow can go, and they want to do a replace action. This means they are going to play a card and not resolve it. They can then spend one rune, and then they can draw another card from the top of their deck and put that into their hand. So that's finished up their turn, and that means we can now go. Now, we did plan on playing this explore card in order to explore out from the territory that we have now lost, and that is a bit of a problem for us. Uh, we can't actually play this card right now, but we do have the ability to move into an area to then explore out of it, so that is something we can consider. Now, we do still have this Goat Clan card, which lets us construct a building, and we should probably do that at some point. But at the moment, the only place we could build is right over here. Now, that's not awful, and one thing for us to consider is the fact that the blue player does not have any cards left in their hand. That means if we want to, we could use this feast to try and move back in and retake this territory, and then explore from that later on. Now, that does mean we would be more vulnerable here to being attacked from the uh, left over here. But again, the blue player isn't taking any more actions. So maybe that should be our overall goal, and then we could try to build back over here. Uh, maybe it was a mistake for us to leave that unguarded, and maybe it was a mistake for the blue player to invade and spend all their cards like that. But either way, let's see how this plays out. So we are going to play this one, and we are going to move in. And I think we should go with four of our units. So we can head across that little bit of land right over there, and now we have four axes to the two of the blue player. After that, we don't have any bonuses, so now it's time to spend food. And we do have three food available, so I think let's spend all three of this, and that means our axe value is currently at seven. Now the blue player can spend food to help out their defense, but they only have one food at the moment. 
that means they could get up to three axes. And again, we have seven. So just like the last battle, but in the inverse, the best they could do with the die would bring them up to six, which would not be enough for them to win. So they are not going to spend this food. <laughs> Looks like we came in with a good enough amount. Of course, we do have to spend a decent amount of resources for this. Now it's time for us to roll the dice. So this will be the blue player, and they got two axes. And then we roll this, and we also got two axes. Well, uh, that is great news for us, because that means we do not suffer any casualties, and neither does the blue player. Uh, we obviously win, because we have more axes. So now the blue player does have to retreat. In this case, they are simply going to pull both of these back over here. And it's essentially the way it started out when the blue player's turn a couple of turns ago. Now, uh, we are pretty different out here. Of course, this has left that territory much more vulnerable to attack from over here. So perhaps this was a good move for the blue player overall. It certainly shook things up here in the middle, and it's leaving us a little bit more vulnerable, which I certainly don't like. Now that we are done, the blue player can go, and they are going to pass. That means they can keep this, which means they will go first in the next round, which does have me a little bit worried. And now they can discard all of these cards and then draw one of the common cards to put on top of their deck. Out of these three options, they've decided to take Skirmishers. All right, yellow is now up, and they are going to play a build card, and they could spend three wood to build a large building, except they don't actually control any territory that has a spot for a large building. So instead, they are going to spend one wood to construct a small building, and they've decided to go with a training camp. After that, they are going to build it right over here, so now they gain an extra unit whenever they recruit into this territory. Well, it's our turn now, and we were successful in fighting back that area, so now let's explore. So we can draw the top tile, and we have to put it over here, because that is our only open territory. Now we could do this if we wanted to, and that would give us a large building spot to construct on. Although at the moment, we just have one wood over here. So I think maybe let's spin this over like that. That way we immediately enclose this territory and we have increased our wood production during the harvest by one. Now this means we are going to get one, two, three fame for enclosing. And that's finished up our turn. Next up, we know the blue player has passed already, so play will go to the yellow player. And they have decided to play a recruit card. So they can place one unit out. And they've decided to put it over here where they do have a training camp. So that will put another unit down onto the board. So it seems like the yellow player is getting pretty strong in the top left corner of the map. Moving on, it's now our turn, and we have one card left in our hand. Now, uh, we do have a rune, so we could discard this in order to replace it with another card if we want to. But I think playing this down to construct a building is fine. So we have one wood, which means we can construct a small building, which again is fine considering we don't have any large building spots to build onto. Now, I think that we should build into one of these two small spots, and we can build any of these except for the rune stone. Now, it does seem attractive to place another training camp out in order to get more units on the board, but this defense tower also seems good to stop uh, players from coming in, or at least make it more punishing if they come in. Now, there is certainly something to be said for going over here and picking up this lumber mill, because that would give us more wood, which means we could construct more. Remember, we have a card which gives us a bonus build with this Goat Clan card here, which means we could hypothetically build a little bit more than our opponents. And these buildings are important, so I think maybe let's give that a shot and construct this building here. Now we can put that into any of these three spots, actually. That is still there. And I think maybe let's just put that right over there to make this a little bit more worthwhile. Of course, we are gaining fame at the end of each round because this is enclosed, but that leaves these open for perhaps more defensive buildings if we want to build those later on. Well, it's now time for the yellow player to go, and they have one card left, which is Grizzled Warriors. This gives them two moves, and if they do combat, this will also give them two axes in each of those combats. In this case, they've decided to move all but one of their units from this area into this region, so they are going to be attacking the blue player. Now, they do have their war chief right over here, and the Stag Clan's war chief lets them, when they battle, pull in one unit from an adjacent area. So that means this unit can also head in because that is just barely connected. Now, they do have another move available to them, which means they could send in another unit if they wanted to, and they've decided they are not going to do that. 
Uh, now, at this point, it looks like the yellow player has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine axes, and the blue player has one, two, three, four, five, six. Next up, yellow can spend food, and they are going to spend two food, which is going to bring their axe value up to 11, and now the blue player could spend food if they want. But they currently just have one, and they've decided it is not going to be worth it to them. So it appears they are conceding the fight, but they are certainly hoping to make this painful, and they are going to place this food back into their area. After that, it's time to roll the dice, and let's put this right over here. So let's roll the dice and see how it goes. Now, in this case, the yellow player got even more axes, which is not something they needed, and the blue player got two casualties. Now, this is probably the best outcome they could want. They do have the Raven Clan Warchief over here, which means they could re-roll this, but again, they figured they were going to lose this anyway, so they may as well make it as painful as possible. So, after that, we can see that the yellow player is inflicting no casualties, and the blue player is inflicting three. So, yellow can remove three of their units... And then after that, the blue player does have to retreat because they lost. Now, in this case, they have decided they are going to send, I think, all of these units down over into this area across that normal border there. Oops, one is remaining, and they could split this up and head over there if they wanted to, but they're going to send it back down here to group up with the rest. Well, yellow is done, and that means we can go, and we don't have any actions to take beyond passing. So let's pass, which means all of these will be discarded over into our discard pile. And then we can take one of these two cards. Now, this Industrious Villagers is a slightly worse version of our base Goat Clan card, and I'm not sure if we need another build. So I think let's go for Future Sight, which will give us first dibs on the turn that we play it uh, for the new common cards out here on the stack. In addition to that, this lets us take those cards and put it on the top of our deck, and we could then spend a rune to draw that card into our hand to use it in the round that we took it. That finishes our turn, and blue has already passed, so now the yellow player can go, and they are going to pass. That means they are going to take the last card available, and at this moment, everyone has passed, so it's now time to move on to the harvest phase. Let's start off with ourselves, and we make one, two, three wood, one food, and one rune from the territories we control. And then we get two more food from our Goat Clan ability. Next up, the blue player unfortunately just gets two food. And then lastly, the yellow player gets four runes, one food, and two wood overall. So yellow is doing quite well. That was certainly an impactful attack that they did there at the end of the round. Next up, as part of Harvest, we can gain fame for our enclosed territories. Now, we get one fame if the territory has two tiles, and two fame if that territory is three or more tiles in size. So we have uh, two closed territories that are three, and a single territory of two, so that means we are going to get two plus two plus one, or five fame. Now, the blue player, unfortunately, does not control any closed territories, so they will not get any fame right now. And lastly, the yellow player controls two large territories and one small one. But remember, they also gain plus one fame for every one of their enclosed territories. So that means as a base, they get two plus two plus one or five, but then they add one more for each. So that means yellow gets eight fame total. At this point, during the harvest phase, if any player wants to spend three of any resource to get one of a different one, they can. But I don't think anyone is going to do that. This means we can move on to the winter phase, where we have to feed our units. So let's focus out here, and we have seven units. The blue player currently has eight units, and the yellow player only has six. This means we have to spend two food. Blue also has to spend two, and yellow only has to spend one. Finally, we have to check the end game conditions. At this moment, no player even has three large buildings, so that one is not done. And this is not the seventh round, so the game is not over. That means it's now time to move into the third round of the game, which means we can all draw cards. So we are going to draw four, and we only have three, so we do have to shuffle up our discard in order to draw the next one. And then our opponents will also draw, and I also have to remember that yellow does need to discard these when they passed at the end of the action phase in the last round. So blue will draw four cards, and yellow will draw five. And now it's time for three new common cards. This is an upgraded trading post, and it says you draw three cards and discard one of them, so you get to keep the other two. 
This right here is a heroic charge, which gives you three movement and one axe in any battles that happen after those moves. And then this is a town hall, which lets you do a single recruit action, but it does have that lightning bolt symbol, which means you can play it alongside another card during an action. All right, it's time for actions and blue can go first. Now they are going to start with a familiar card here. It is the capture card they played last turn that lets them remove a unit and add a unit. In this case, they are going to target yellow and remove this unit and then add one of theirs down over here. Now that did have a lightning bolt symbol on it so they can play another card and that is going to be skirmishers. This gives them up to three movements total and they've decided to use one of those to send a single unit from here down over there and then with the other move, they are going to send all but one of their units back in to try and retake this area. Now they do have one movement left, but they've decided not to use it. So now it's time to resolve this battle. As you can see, the blue player currently has six axes compared to the three of the yellow player. But the yellow player does have their war chief here, and the stag war chief lets them bring in a unit from an adjacent territory. So they are going to bring a unit in from over there which means they have a total of four axes at this point. Uh, oops, I just realized this card should have been uh, discarded for the yellow player, so that should be in their deck. Sorry about that. In fact, they did draw the top two cards from their deck after that reshuffle, so I'm just going to shuffle that in and then draw those cards again. All right, we can come back to the battle, and the blue player has now decided to spend one food to increase their axe value by one, and the yellow player has decided they are going to do the same. Uh, each of them could have spent more food, but neither of them had more than a single food. So that means the yellow player is now up to five axes total, and the blue player is at seven. So now it's time for the combat dice to be rolled, and that is certainly not what the blue player wanted to see. Now with these two axes, the yellow player is now up to seven axes, which is the same amount as the blue player. Now the defender wins ties, so that means yellow is winning, but fortunately for the blue player, they are the Raven clan and they have the Raven war chief over here, which lets them reroll this die once. So they are hoping to see at least one axe. Oh, they got three. Well, they are certainly happy to see that and they have to go with the second result when they roll. So at this point, there is just one casualty being inflicted from this defensive post right here, and the yellow player controlled it, which means the blue player is going to lose one of their units. And then the yellow player lost, so they will have to retreat from this area. In this case, they've decided to send their war chief and one unit back over here, and they'll send another unit down over there. All right, the yellow player can go now, and they want to start by playing this Stag Clan card, which lets them choose a single territory, and they can collect all the food and lumber that that territory would make in a harvest phase. In this case, they could take one food or two wood, and they've decided they need food more than wood at this point, so they are going to take a food. After that, they can play another card, because the first one had a lightning bolt symbol, and they've decided to play this one, which lets them construct a building, and if it's small, they could make it identical to another small building in the territory they choose. So they can spend one wood for the small building, and then they've decided to use that card's ability to build another training camp over here. Again, normally you can't have two of the same building in the same area, but that Industrious Villages card lets them break that rule. This also means when they recruit over here, they will get two extra units. So they are certainly doubling down on controlling this area and to have it be a central part of their game moving forward. All right, it's time for us to go and we have a pretty flexible hand. And I think let's start by playing Future Sight. That says we can immediately pick one face-up card from the common deck area and put it on top of our deck. And we will not pick up another card later on in this round when we pass. So let's look over here, and all three of these are good. Uh, this Town Hall lets you recruit once, and then you can play another card, which means you could immediately move that unit, which could be a powerful effect. Uh, over here, this Heroic Charge is a very flexible card with three movement, and plus one axe to combat at the end is also pretty attractive, but I think the one that we want is here in the middle. This is an upgraded trading post. This lets us draw three cards and discard one of them, which means we play one card to gain two cards into our hand. That means we will take more actions in that given round, and of course it lets us cycle through our deck faster as well. So I think let's go ahead and take this, and then we can put it on top of our deck. Now next turn, I think we are going to spend our two runes 
to replace this weak one move from our deck in order to draw that card into our hand to use it this round, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and save that for our next turn. This means it's time for the blue player to go, and they are going to play a build card, and this will let them construct a small building with this one wood spent. In this case, they want a lumber mill, and they're going to place that right over here. Next up, it's Yellow's turn, and they are going to play a Feast card in order to do a Recruit action. So that will put one unit out, and they've decided to place that down over here, where they have two training camps, so that means two more units will appear into that area, and they are suddenly significantly stronger in that territory. Alright, it's our turn, and as I said on our previous turn, I think we should remove this card from our deck permanently. Now that is going to cost us both of our runes. We can then place this back in the box and then draw the top card from our deck, which is of course this one, which we knew was there because we took it on our last turn. So we can add that into our hand and we will likely plan on our next turn, but for now we are done. This means blue can go and they are going to play this Raven Clan card. That lets them pick two map tiles and then they choose one and put the other one to the bottom of the deck. So they can draw these two and they've decided to go with this one here, and the other one will go down to the bottom. Next up with this tile, they're going to place it like that, and that is going to close this territory in. This means blue will get one, two, three fame, and then they are the Raven Clan, and they get all resources from buildings and tiles when they close in a region, so that means they will immediately get two wood and one food. All right, they are done, so yellow can go, and they want to permanently remove this Explore card from their deck. That is going to cost them two of their runes, and then they can draw the top card from their deck. After that, we can go, and let's play our upgraded trading post. That lets us draw the top three cards from our deck, and we will have to discard one of those. Now we have found a build card for ourselves, a trading post, which gives us even more draw, and this recruit. Now I think out of all of these, the recruit might be less important, so I think let's slide that one over here. We do have three wood over here, so it would be nice to uh, use that to build. Now, of course, we do have two feasts, but it's nice to keep our plan flexible with those cards. All right, we are done with our turn, which means blue can go, but they are out of cards. So they are going to pass, and then they are going to take this town hall and put it on top of their deck. Next up, the yellow player can go, and they are going to put a feast card out and use it to explore. The only open territory they have is this one, so they can take the top tile, and they've decided that is just fine for them. They can place it over here. That means they will get two fame because they did enclose a two tile region. All right, we are up, and let's go ahead and play our trading post. <laughs> that lets us draw three more cards from the top of our deck, although we only have two cards, so we will immediately add this over here, and then we can look at these three cards. Now, one of them will go on top of our deck, one will go into the discard, and one will go into our hand. Now, we already have a build card, so I don't think we need this one right over here. Uh, and getting more recruits out is probably better than building for us at this point. So, yeah, let's slide this one into the discard pile, I think. And then, hmm, I guess we don't actually have a good way to explore right now. So let's put this on top of our deck, and then this recruit will go into our hand. At this point, we could build if we wanted to, but I think I want to hold off until we move. After that, blue is passed, so now the yellow player can go, and they have just one card in their hand. Now, this is a single move, and they could use this to attack, but they've decided instead to just move this unit down over here, because that means they now control another enclosed area, which will give them even more fame during the harvest phase of the round. All right, we can go, and we still have four cards in our hand, and we can look across and see that our opponents have no cards in their hand, so that does leave us in a pretty good spot at this point. Now, let's go ahead and start things off by playing out this feast, and we are going to use it to move. In this case, I think let's just send one unit down over here, so that we are now in a territory that can have a large building constructed in it. After that, we are done with our turn, the blue player has passed, and now the yellow player is going to pass, which means all of these cards will go into their discard pile, and they are going to take Heroic Charge and put it on top of their deck. Alright, it's once again back to us, and both of our opponents have passed, so we can just keep taking turns. Now let's start with the Goat Clan card, 
and let's use this to do a standard build action, and let's spend three wood to construct a large building. So our options are a fortress, which will help us uh, defend that area, a forge, which will get us another card draw at the start of each turn, and the altar of kings, which just gives us three fame. Now, I think we should maybe start trying to compete on fame a little bit more. So let's build one of these, and we can place that right over here. Now, this is a very lucrative region once this is built, so we should probably start focusing on defending it more. Fortunately, at the moment, our enemies are not super close to us. After that, let's go ahead and recruit. And while it does feel good to place this person over there to make use of that training camp, I think we should start putting them down over here instead, because again, this is a really lucrative building to have. After that, both of our opponents pass, so now we get to go again, and our final card is a feast. So this means we can recruit, move, explore, or build. In general, I do like exploring, but with an explorer, we would not be able to enclose another region. So I think let's just recruit again with that feast. After that, we are done with our turn, and so are our opponents. So now we can pass, which means we will send all of these cards back onto our discard pile. And we don't draw a common card, because remember, we did that earlier on in the round due to this future sight card that we played. All right, it's time for the harvest. Let's start off with ourselves. Now we are going to get one, two, three wood, one rune, and one food, and we will also gain three fame because we control this altar of kings. In addition to that, we are going to harvest the fame for the regions that we control that are enclosed, so that is going to be one, two, three, four, five more fame. All told, that is eight fame, so we can take a ten and remove two, and then of course we are going to get two food from our goat clan ability. Next up, blue is going to get two wood plus a food from over here. They will get another food there and two runes, and they now control two large areas, so that is going to give them four fame total. Lastly, yellow will get two wood, two food, and two runes. They will also get one, two, three, four, five fame, plus one, two, three, four more due to their stag clan ability. Next up, it's time for winter. It looks like we have nine units on the board, the blue player has eight, and so does the yellow player. That means each one of the players is going to lose two food. At this point, we can check the end game conditions. Uh, no player is even close to ending the game with large buildings, and we still have cards over here, so that means the game will now move on to a new round. Well, the first thing we have to do is draw cards. So we are going to draw four. So will the blue player. And of course, these cards should be in their discard pile. Sorry for forgetting that. Lastly, yellow can draw five cards because they do have one forge. Next up, we can draw three common cards. This first one is woodcutters. It says you recruit one unit for every one of your lumber symbols that you have showing on your territories, including your buildings. Next up, this is allies from the wild. And this one lets you do two recruitments and those have to go down into a neutral territory. The final one is scouts and that simply gives you an explore action that can be played on the same turn as another card. Next up, it's time for the action phase, and Blue once again gets to start this off. Now, they're going to play a feast, and they want to build, and they want to construct a small building for one wood. In this case, they want to put a training camp right over here, and then after that, they are going to play this town hall, which has a lightning bolt symbol, which means they can play it alongside other cards, and they are going to recruit. Now, they are obviously going to target this area, so that is going to bring in one unit plus one more for that training camp. All right, it's the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to build. Now, they have a bunch of wood over here, but no spots to construct a large building. They are regretting not spending three of these to turn them perhaps into a food, but they would have had to do that in the previous harvest phase. So they are going to spend a single wood now, and they will try to remember to do that conversion in this upcoming harvest phase, if that does make sense. Now they have decided to build a food silo, and they are going to put that right over here. At this point, they are going to play another card, because this has a lightning bolt symbol, and that lets them harvest all of the wood and food from one of their territories. Now they are going to target this area, where they have two food showing, so that is going to give them two food immediately. All right, it's now our turn, and we do have Future Sight, but we don't have any other standard ways to draw another card, besides, of course, spending one rune to just draw a card. 
Now, that is not awful, and it does have me feeling like maybe we should do this. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's play Future Sight down to draw a card, which we'll put here, and next turn we'll use Replace to pull that into our hand. The reason we want to do this is because Woodcutters seems particularly good for us right now. So that'll go on top of our deck, and that's finished our turn. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and they want to play a feast in order to construct a building. Now they are going to spend three wood in order to build a large building, and in this case they are going with a fortress, which they will place right down over here in the middle of all of the action. Now that is going to add two axes into every battle that happens over here, of course for the defending player. Next up, yellow can go once again, and they are going to play a recruit out in order to place one plus two more units into this increasingly populated territory. Well, yellow's done, so now we can go, and as I said on our last turn, let's spend one rune to replace a card with a new one from the top of our deck. That does mean we have to get rid of one of these uh, onto this pile and not use it. Now, I think building is going to be good, and feast is nice and flexible, so let's play the explorer to not use its ability, and then we can draw this card right here, and with that, we are done with our turn. So, play will move on to the blue player, and they've decided to recruit once again. And they are going to place over here, which means their training camp will put yet another troop into that spot. So there is a serious militarization happening in this part of the board. Next up, yellow can go, and they have decided they would like to do an upgrade. This means they do have to play a card, and it's going to be this heroic charge with a three move and one axe. But they decide they don't really want that right now, and then they are going to spend three of their runes in order to add this card into their hand. After that, we are up, and we can now play this Woodcutters if we want to. The only reason we wouldn't do that is if we thought that we were going to place more lumber production spots out on the board uh, later on in this turn, and I don't think that is going to happen. Uh, there's quite a bit of forces out there right now, so I think let's get some more units of our own. So again, each one of our territories will produce one unit for each of the wood production that territory has. As you can see, we have three territories that each have one lumber production in them, so we can recruit one unit into each of them. Next up, blue can go, and they want to simply explore. So they'll draw the top tile, and they've decided to put it over here. That means they have enclosed this region in, which will give them one two fame, and then they are the Raven Clan, so they will produce all of the stuff in that region, which in this case is going to be a single food. After that, yellow can go. And they are going to play this Stag Clan level 2 card. This says they can draw one card for each of their closed territories that are large and have at least three tiles in them. Currently they have just one of those, so they will draw a single card to finish up their turn. Alright, it's time for us to go, and I think let's play a Feast in order to move once. With this move, I think let's send two out of the four units from that territory over here, because that is an enclosed territory which will give us fame at the end of the round. This also kind of frees us up to maybe start moving into these areas to explore up there in order to increase our options out on the board. So far, we have been squeezed between the blue player all game long, and we haven't really had an ability to go after the yellow player. They seem to be doing very well, and so I do like the idea of maybe trying to work our way up over there, perhaps. Either way, I think for now, that is a good move. And now let's play this Goat Clan card with the Lightning Bolt symbol, which means it can be played right now. This lets us build, and we do have three wood, but we don't have a spot to construct a large building. So instead of that, we can spend a single wood, which lets us place a small building out, and let's go with this defensive tower to make the blue player think twice about potentially pushing into this spot. Alright, blue can now go, and it appears they don't have any cards. This means they are going to pass first once again. Uh, we were really close to passing first this round, but blue still got in there. Now that means they can take a card from the common pool, and they've decided to go with allies from the wild. After that, yellow can go, and they have decided to construct a small food silo. Now they can put that either here or there, and they figure this territory is a little more protected. After that, we can go, and we are out of cards. This means I don't think we have anything else to do, so we can pass. That means we can discard these, and we do not draw a common card, because once again, we did that earlier on with our Future Sight special card. After that, the yellow player can go, because blue has already passed, and they are going to play Grizzled Warriors. With this, they have considered potentially doing a big push in here to have a gigantic battle, 
but instead they have decided to maybe split up a little bit to give them some good explore options, because of course as the Stag Clan, they get a lot of fame for controlling lots of different territories. So in this case, they are going to send a single unit out over there, and they will send this unit over to this spot here. So those are their two moves. All right, that's finished up their turn, which means they can go once again because both of their opponents have passed. At this point, they are going to pass, which means they are going to take scouts and put it on top of their deck. And now it's time for the harvest phase. Well, let's start with ourselves. Now we are going to get three wood, a single food, and a single rune. Then we will get three fame from this altar of the kings. After that, we will get two fame for this territory and two for that one, and then another one plus one fame for those small territories we control. All told, that is nine fame, so we can take a ten and put a one back. And then, of course, as the Goat Clan, we will get two more food. At this point, we could do a three to one in order to get different resources, and perhaps that's a good idea. We do have a lot of food going on. Now, we are going to need to spend three of it very soon, so I am tempted to spend, uh, let's say, two wood and one food in order to take another rune, because those will let us do things like thin out our deck to cycle through things faster. So let's take that rune. Next up, blue can harvest. They are going to get one, two, three food, two wood, and two runes. They will also get two plus two plus one fame. So they can add all of this into their area, and they are not going to spend any resources to get any different ones. Before moving on, the blue player did need to discard these cards when they passed. Sorry for missing that once again. Finally, yellow can harvest. They are going to get one, two, three wood. They will get one, two, three, four food and two runes. On top of that, they will get one, two, three, four, five fame plus one, two, three, four fame for their stag clan special ability. So they can add all of this down into their area. Before moving on, they've decided to get rid of two wood and one food in order to take one more rune. All right, it's now time for winter. We can look over here and see that 12 out of our 15 units are deployed, so that means we have to spend three food right now to feed them. Next up, blue also has 12 out, so that will cost them three food. And finally, the yellow player has 11 out, which is still going to cost three food. At this point, we can check for the end game, and each of the players has one large building, and two of the players have that building in an enclosed area. But again, the game will end if any one player has three enclosed areas with at least one large building in them, so we are still not close there. There is also cards over here on this deck, so the game has not ended, and that means we can now move on to the next round of the game. The first thing we do is draw cards. Now, we are going to draw four cards as well as the blue player. And then the yellow player will draw five cards because they do still have that forge. Next up, we can draw three more common cards. This is Simple Living, and it says you can build a building for one less wood, and small buildings become free. After that, we have Shield Bearers. Now this gives you two movement, and this card absorbs one casualty result in any one fight that happens with that move. After that, this is Mercenary Camp, and it says that both of the units must be placed onto the same territory, and recruitment can be done into a neutral territory. All right, it's time for actions, and the blue player will start. Now, they are going to play Allies from the Wild, which lets them recruit two units into a neutral territory. After considering their options, they will head right over here. All right, they're done with their turn. So, yellow can go, and they have decided to start things off by removing. They are going to remove this card for two runes, and then they can draw the top card from their deck. Well, that's finished up their turn, and now it's time for us to go. As you can see, we have both a trading post and an upgraded trading post in our hand, so I figure let's go ahead and start with the upgraded trading post. That will go here, and we'll draw three cards. So that is one card, and then we can reshuffle our discard pile, and then see the other two. So we have found woodcutters and goat clan and a regular build. Uh, now, one of these goes into the discard pile, and I think that will certainly be the build, and then we can add both of these into our hand. Now, at this point, we could play this card in order to construct a building right now, but I don't really see a reason to, so I think we are done with our turn. Well, blue can take their second turn, and they have decided to play this explore card. So they can draw one card from the top of the pile. So they can take this one here, and it does have a large building spot. Uh, they could put it over here, or they could put it up here, and they've decided to do that. All right, that's finished up their turn. 
So yellow can go, and they want to start with scouts. That has a lightning bolt symbol on it, which means they can play another card, and this will let them place a map tile out. So they can take the top tile here, and they've decided to place that down like this. Next up, they're going to play a feast card, and with it, they want to explore again. So they can once again draw a tile from the top, and this is the one they found, and they like the idea of putting it like that. That means they have enclosed a region, which will give them three fame. All right, it's time for us to go, and I'm starting to get a little concerned about the yellow player. They have a lot of fame, and they also now have the uh, potential of constructing a second large building in an enclosed area. Now, I think for this turn, we should play a trading post out. That will let us draw three cards, and then we can keep one, put one to the top of our deck, and then discard the other. Now, uh, so far, this is interesting. Future Sight would let us grab a card from the top, and we could then spend a rune to immediately play that this turn if we wanted to. Um, now, those cards are pretty good, but I'm not sure if they're good enough to focus on that right now. Yep, I think we are actually going to discard Future Sight, and then let's go ahead and bring the Feast card into our hand because it's flexible, and then we can put this Explore onto the top of our deck, and we can keep that in mind because that means if we don't like one of these cards, we could turn it into an Explore card by spending one of our runes. Well, we're done, so now the blue player can go, and they've decided to play their Raven Clan card, which will let them draw two tiles and then place one of them. So they can take a look at the top two from this deck, and they've decided they want to place this one. The other one will then go to the bottom of the deck, and they're going to put this like that. This means they have enclosed that area, so they will get one, two, three fame. And they are the Raven Clan, which means they immediately produce in that area, so that will give them a wood. So they can add this over to their area, and that finished out their turn. That means yellow can go, and they've decided to build. Now they are going to spend three of their wood to construct a large building. And with this, they are going to build a forge way up here. That means they are going to draw another card at the start of each of their turns. And this is another large building for them in an enclosed space. So they now have two large territories with large buildings in them. Well, that's finished up their turn, so that can go into the played pile, and now we can go. All right, let's take a look at our cards, and we are pretty flexible in our hand, although we do have two cards that would let us recruit. Now, um, we have a lot of units out already, so this makes me feel like maybe we should attack so that we could get some back as casualties to then recruit them back onto the board to try and strengthen our position. Unfortunately, the player that we really want to hit is the yellow player, and we haven't really put ourselves in a position to be able to attack them. We can definitely hit the blue player, but not necessarily yellow. Uh, now, we do have a couple of runes, which means instead of playing these cards, we could spend a rune to cycle into a different card if we want to. Remember, this is an explore card, so that's good to keep in mind. Uh, we could also, I guess, get rid of two of these in order to permanently remove one of these and then draw that card. Actually, that seems like a pretty good idea, so let's go for it. Let's spend both of our runes, and we will do a remove action. So we will permanently remove this recruit card and then replace it with a new card. All right, so that has finished up our turn. This means blue can go, and this appears to be their last card. Uh, they could have played it last turn, but they decided they wanted to stall things out a bit. Now that is a build, and they are going to spend all three of their wood to construct a large building. In this case, they would like to build a forge, and they will put that right over here. Now at this point, two out of the three players have two different closed territories that are three or bigger that have at least one of these large buildings in them. That means we are getting much closer to that endgame trigger as one possibility. Unfortunately, both of those players are not us. <laughs> we have one large building, and it is far from enclosed at this point, so we definitely need to keep that in mind. But either way, that has finished up the blue player's turn, and that means that yellow can now go. Well, it looks like they want to play a feast card, and with that, they are going to recruit. That lets them bring one unit out, and they want to place it right over here, which isn't too surprising. Now that region has two training camps, so they can bring out two more units, and that has finished up their turn. That means we can go, and we still have five cards in our hand to play. Now I think let's start by playing this Explore out. That means we'll have to put a tile down into one of these two spots, because this is currently our only open territory. Now this is the tile that we found, <laughs> and it does have a large building spot on it. Um, but if we were to put it like that, then uh, this would let us construct a large building, but that would not help us push that endgame condition. Uh, so instead, I think we should maybe rotate this like that so that uh, we could maybe work our way over to that. We certainly don't want to do this because that would give the blue player another large building spot. So we'll put it just like that, 
and that did not enclose any area, so that's finished up our turn. This means blue can go, but they are out of cards, so they are going to pass, and then they can choose a common card, and they've decided to go with the shield bearers. After that, it's the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to play Grizzled Warriors. Now, this gives them two movement, and then two axes in any combat that happens from those movements. Well, it looks like they are going to make a push to potentially win the game this round. They are going to head into this area, so let's kind of consolidate these units up here to make it obvious. And then yellow is going to come in here with all but one of their units. After that, they will use their Stag Clan Warchief ability to bring in one more adjacent unit, and they've decided to go really big into this fight. After that, they have one more move left, and they are just going to send this person in there as well, which means they are abandoning two of these small territories to try and make this an overwhelming battle. Now, at this point, they can count up the axes. Yellow has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the blue player has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Next up, yellow can spend food, and they are going to spend three food, so that brings their overall axe count to 16. After that, blue can spend food, and they have decided they are going to spend two, so that means they are at 13. After that, it's time for the combat roll, and I just realized I've been doing it slightly wrong in this extended playthrough. Uh, the attacker rolls before the defender even rolls their die. So the yellow player will roll first, and they got two axes. After that, the blue player can go as the defender. Well, blue does have their raven warchief over here, so they can reroll this die if they want to. Now, the yellow player did get two axes, and that means they are currently at 18, and the blue player has 15. So they've decided they are going to reroll this in order to try and inflict as many casualties as possible, and it looks like that is going to inflict one more casualty. So at this point, casualties will be assigned. Yellow does not have any, but blue has one, two of them. So yellow will lose two units. And then after that, the blue player is going to have to retreat. In this case, they've decided to send a single unit over here, and then the rest of these are going to head down here to join up with that one that's down there already. So that battle is over, and at this point, the yellow player currently does control three closed regions with at least one large building in them. So if that does not change by the end of this round, then yellow will win, and we won't even count up our fame. With that in mind, it's now our turn, and we have to do everything we can to try and stop that from happening. That means we should probably uh, recruit these people in. Maybe we should not have gotten rid of that uh, regular recruit action. But either way, I think let's now play this woodcutter out. And that says we recruit one unit into a territory for each lumber icon in that territory. Well, we have three territories that currently have the lumber icon, and we have three units. So let's start by recruiting over here, and our training camp will activate. So that means we can bring in another, and we just have one left to go between these two spots. And I figure... We'll send this person over here. That's going to finish our turn, and blue has passed, so now yellow can go, and they are going to pass. So they can take one of the two common cards, and they have decided to pick up the mercenary camp. This means it's our turn once again, and we need to try and take over this area with the cards that we have in our hand. Now, I think this is relatively straightforward as far as a strategy is concerned. We need to spend a feast to move units into here, and then the other feast to move all of these units out in order to try and take that zone away from the yellow player. So we'll play this one first, and we can bring these three units into that area. That does mean we are vacating this zone, but at this point, we need to focus everything on stopping the yellow player from winning at the end of the round. That's finished our turn, and both of our opponents have passed, so now we can go again, and we can play this feast to once again move. Now, I think <laughs> we could uh, certainly move in here with all of them and abandon this territory. I guess that is what we should do. So we're doing a lot of abandoning right now, which I don't like the idea of, but either way, we can head in here with all of these units. Now, after that, the combat will happen, and it's worth noting that this card should be discarded for the yellow player, and we can now count up the axes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, compared to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of our opponent. Uh, that does mean we have an uphill battle here. 
Next up, we can spend food, and unfortunately, we only have one. Uh, I think now would be an amazing time to have a lot more, but uh, we did not plan ahead for this. Uh, I just realized that this token should definitely be discarded, so we are going to add one food, and after that, the yellow player will add no food because they don't actually have any. Next up, it's time to roll dice, and we will roll first as the attacker. Now that is a pretty good roll overall. That's one casualty and two axes. And uh, we don't have any way to re-roll the die like the blue player. So this is the die roll that we will be going with. That means we are currently at 12 axes and the defending opponent is at 11. So if they roll even one axe, they are going to win this. And they did get it. Uh, that is two axes as well as one casualty. So after that, the casualties will be assigned. We are going to lose two units and the yellow player will lose one, and then we do have to retreat. So I guess we will just send everybody back over here. After that, we do have one more card in our hand, which we could play right now, but unfortunately, it's not going to help us out. I would love to spend a rune in order to draw a new card that could potentially let us try to fight again or something like that, but that is not an option for us. So let's just go ahead and put this here and wait, because uh, this action will not help us out. That means we are done for the round, so we can pass. That means we will take this card right here and put it on top of our deck. At this point, it's time for the harvest phase, but I don't think it makes sense to go through all of that because it's obvious that the yellow player is going to win at the end of this round. That is because they have at least three regions that are at least three tiles large with at least one large building in them. Now, if multiple players had met that condition, then it would make sense to go through all of Harvest, because between those tied players, the one with the most fame would win. But in this case, it's just the yellow player, so counting up extra fame and resources, as well as spending resources for the winter to potentially lose fame from these unrest cards, doesn't make sense, because again, the yellow player is going to win this by themselves. So we can fast forward through the Harvest and Winter phase, and at this point, we can see that the yellow player has won the game, and that completes one full three-player game of Northgard. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we were far from winning there at the end. Uh, it's true that this game could have gone on a couple more rounds, but it ended early because obviously that is one of the potential endgame triggers. Uh, we saw the fact that the stag player was making a big push to try and control three large regions with at least one large building in each of them, and unfortunately we were not able to stop them from making that happen. I think part of that uh, has to do with the fact that we were essentially walled in by the blue player, so we weren't able to affect the yellow player uh, much throughout the game. Uh, we certainly tried near the end, but um, they had a really potent army. Uh, the fact that they were able to get a card which lets them uh, build another training camp in a region which normally they're not allowed to do allowed them to uh, rebound quite uh, quickly from losing most of their units when they battled the blue player in the middle parts of the game. So I think uh, realistically that one card is a big factor as to why uh, they were able to win. Uh, now, if the game had gone all the way to the end, then we would have counted up our fame, and I think we were doing a pretty good job with gathering fame, although it's likely that the yellow player actually had a fame advantage on us at that point as well. Uh, I was trying to expand out and control more uh, territories to get more of the fame, but of course um, the yellow player got extra points or extra fame, I suppose, uh, for those territories. Uh, now, our uh, benefit was getting more food in each one of the uh, harvest phases, and that is certainly a good ability as well. That let us be more potent in combat, and it also let let us support a larger army out on the board compared to the needs of our opponents. Um, obviously, that was not enough for us to end up winning the game, which was unfortunate. I definitely tried to um, <laughs> I tried to do my best in order for us to break out from the blue player. They kind of on both sides of us, which was a little bit of an interesting conundrum for us because we could see the yellow player was doing well, but we had a hard time getting over to them. And I think that I likely could have done a much better job of um, trying to stop the yellow player from going crazy like that um, if I was to sit down and play the game again in those exact same circumstances. So uh, yeah, overall, I think the game did do a good job of showing how the overall flow of the game goes. Obviously, it can end early, and that is what happened here. But we also saw lots of ways for us to get fame. In fact, we constructed a large building that gave us extra fame because I was trying to really compete on that end game uh, condition. Unfortunately, that was not the one that ended up mattering. So uh, yeah, I think at this point, that is going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this play. 
As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.